Well, our moms think we're funny. All right. Hi. Podcast. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. This is Turk182. It sure is. And uh, welcome back to another episode of Our Moms Think We're Funny. Yeah. I'm a so, Comey. So I'm Turk182. <laughs> um, I'm the only guy you really need to need to worry about right this now. This going... Yeah, since uh, this guy doesn't really want to uh, actually engage anything. Uh, uh, you let, In the last podcast, you're like, yeah, well, I got to use this to, you know, kind of promote my art. But then you won't even engage with the fans. Be like, oh, hey, yeah, people, yeah, I love you. I want you know, I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know me. Listen to another podcast. <laughs> go go listen to the Super Mega Cast. No, don't do that. Dakota Ring Theater. Don't do that. Either. Time is so fucking limited. Why are you listening to us? Don't 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 do that. Don't. I can't say don't listen to you because I got to do a podcast with you. And I'm like, hey, I can't say don't listen to the stupid shit he says because again, that's pretty much all we ever we do is you'd be like, what are they going to just listen to me all the time? Ah, yeah. oh. you are the main draw to this uh, to this podcast. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's so many people are like, oh my god, that Turk one of you too. <laughs> He's so dreamy. <laughs> I love listening to a guy who sounds like he his balls haven't dropped yet. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my voice is higher than yours, dude. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, let's set up a poll. <laughs> hey, Facebook, <laughs> whose voice is lower? See, this is why we need to be on Twitter. <laughs> whose voice sucks the most? <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, okay. So, what do you have for us today, Akomi? You know, I, I feel like. If I smoked and like got my voice all gravelly, the, you know, I, I would do that in the attempt of my voice sounding lower. But instead, it would just make me sound like, uh, like Danny DeVito or something. That's not bad. Hey, how's it thing. going? Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Comey. No, that 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 would get annoying after a while. <laughs> hey, you goddamn kids, stop running in the hall. <laughs> Try to masturbate here. <laughs> so. uh... Well, I've uh, we've we've talked a bit about you know some of the some of the shit that I've uh, brought to your attention from the dark corners of the internet, as I like to refer to it. Not to be confused with the deep web, just like uh, just like there's there's more obscure people and things that uh, not not a lot of folks know about, and you know I think that's kind of a mercy. But uh, you know, I, I feel like it's my duty to like bring bring the the stuff to people's attention. Because uh, you know, when when we met, you didn't know who Chris Chan was. I, you, you'd never, <laughs> and, I, and I really had no problem with that. It's, exactly. it's not like it's not like I was. I was like, oh man, I really. It's like it's like, well, you brought something great into my life. I'm just like, <laughs> like you know, it, you 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 didn't really do me any favors there. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying. Is it's a mercy that people don't know about this stuff. But I feel like it's you know my job to just kind of ruin that for everyone. Great. Uh, and you know, you didn't know who Earl Hypernova was until I uh, I dropped that bit of news on you. Yeah, you. Man, that was fantastic. I, I love that. <laughs> you were completely uninformed on the uh, pro Jared divorce fiasco, and uh, how's that going, by the way? So that's kind of fallen by the wayside, honestly. Like Jared released his big video, like kind of proving that he didn't knowingly engage in solicitation of nudes from minors. And so he won a lot of people back over to his side, but now he's going around like I I defeated cancel culture. And it's like you re- you really didn't, you know. You just proved that you weren't knowingly a pedophile. But uh, so so now he's taking this whole thing. He's trying to spin it as in like I did something great. Oh yeah, nah. So um, so he does all that, and you know he's he's trying to act like he's hot shit for that. But then uh, wizards because you know Jared and his mistress Holly were. Uh, they were part of uh, Wizards of the Coast's official D&D podcast, uh, Dice Camera Action. I remember you said that they got let go, right? Yeah, so Wizards was like, okay, well, we're canceling the contract with these people. We're bringing in a whole new cast for a whole new show. And so uh, Jared's like, no, no, I've won everybody back to my side. You know, you, it, it could be even better for the show than ever because we're bringing in all these new people who realize I was right all along. They're like, no, we don't care whether you're right or wrong. You're bringing controversy to what's supposed to be just a, an all-access podcast. So, it's like you know, we just we don't want any kind of controversy, whether you've beaten it or not. We don't want that associated with us. So they they dropped Jared. So Jared and Holly are like, 
Well, fine. We'll we'll show them. We'll start our own D and D podcast with our characters. So if you if you like following our characters on Dice Camera Action, just you know, just follow our social media, and we'll we'll be doing our own D and D show with them. And then Wizards was like, <laughs> actually, no, because the characters belong to them. Yeah, because when you signed on for this, you signed the rights to your characters on to to be the property of Wizards of the Coast. So <laughs> no, you're not. And. uh... The, the real irony of that whole situation is that uh, Jared's been playing his rogue character since he was 11. So he signed away the rights to this character who he's had his his entire role-playing game life. And now he can't play it. <laughs> wow, that's... Um, I'm not going to say that's awesome because it's not awesome, but that's... <laughs> totally awesome. That's, that's so sad. I, I hate it. I would, I would hate it for him if he hadn't been arrogant about it. But we've both talked before, we hate arrogance... I can't, I can't stand this cocky attitude of, uh, I beat cancel culture. It'd be better for, for wizards if you guys just kept me on the show because of how awesome I am at defeating cancel culture. Well, fine, I'll show you. I'll just take my character and go elsewhere. I just I love that it's like, yeah, no, you're not doing that, actually. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's so, that's so, so. <laughs> It's so so. It's so so. It is. It's, it's, it's so so. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it all happened over Twitter. It was all like text based, but you can just imagine that playing out in a movie, <laughs> where he's like at the boardroom, like in the middle of this meeting, and all these guys in suits are like, "No, we have to let you go." And he stands up. He's like, "Fine, I'm taking my rogue, and I'll have my own successful business." And they're like, "Hate to break it to you, kid." <laughs> you know what would be the best is that. When, when that happens, there's a guy there and he's like, hand over your character sheet. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, what? Hand over your character sheet. <laughs> he, has to, he, has to open up, he has to open up his binder and then undo the three rings like, or like slide it out of the protective sleeve. <laughs> and, <it took. laughs> and then he like reaches into his pocket and he like starts passing them his dice and they're like, no, no, you keep that as a souvenir at <laughs> <good> times. <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, uh, people who have listened to this podcast for a length of time know this about me. They know that I just love, like, stirring shit up on the internet, that I love finding... Or on the podcast. Or on the podcast. They, they know that I love finding what what are called dumpster fires on the internet. I love this stuff. So, uh, thanks once again to the incredible uh, uh, internet law cal documentarians that I've spoken so highly of in the past. Uh, I just uh, I discovered a documentary on what was called Time Cube, and uh, thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, the theory itself is obviously worth discussing, but the guy behind it is also very worth discussing. So we're just gonna jump into this. Um, I've got the Wikipedia page for Time Cube pulled up, and I'm actually gonna just start doing some reading on the actual Time Cube web page. This guy has uh, and this this is uh, the late. Uh, whoa, where's his name here? I want to make sure he's actually credited here. Uh, this is the late Otis Eugene Ray, also known as Gene Ray. Uh, he founded this in 1997. He is the self-proclaimed wisest man on earth. So we're just gonna wow, we're, yeah. So we're just gonna look at uh, Time Cube. Uh, this is version four CE of the website. Um, earth has four days simultaneously each rotation. You erroneously measure time from one corner. Every day has one midday, one sed- one sundown, one midnight, and one sunup. Okay, well, say, say that again now, please. <laughs> earth body, four corner time equals four leg mobility. Every earth day, every period of 24 hours, has one midday, one sundown, one midnight, and one sunup. So he's saying within, within every like quadrant of the earth, within a 24 hour period, each quadrant experiences those four points of day. So there are four day periods of midday, sundown, midnight, and sunup. Okay. So that's four days within 24 hours. It's his theory. Truth it's note. It's theory. <laughs> Truth note, Earth has one day even if it stood still and four days in one rotation. He's offered $1,000 to anyone who can disprove this harmonic cube because time exists as a cube. So, uh... Let's see, what, what do we got here? Uh, in 1884, Meridian Time personnel met in Washington to change Earth time. First word said that 
the first word said was that only one day could be used on Earth to not change the one-day marshmallow. So they applied the one day and ignored the other three days. The marshmallow time was wrong then, and it proved wrong today. This is a major lie. Has so much boring feed from it's wrong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> is, is English this guy's, like, third language? This guy was born in America. Raised in America. And he talks like that? Yeah, he lives down south. I'm sorry, I've been down south. <laughs> People don't talk like that down there. <laughs> uh, this is a major lie. Has so much boring feed from it's wrong. No man on earth has no belly button. It proves every believer on earth a liar. I, I think what he's saying there is that um, it it's popular amongst the uh, fundamentalist Christians to say that Adam and Eve didn't have belly buttons because they didn't need them. They were created rather than born. And so he's saying, well, nobody on earth has no belly buttons, so people who believe the Bible are liars. It's basically what he's getting at Nobody there. on earth have no belly buttons? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no man on earth has no belly button, Turk. You don't rape a hamster. Okay, so he's saying he's saying people on earth, that nobody on earth doesn't have a belly button. Exactly. Wow. You sure? Now, when you say down south, did you mean like South America? Oh, no, no. I mean, he was like, he was born... Uh, where, you know what? Let's pull up the Wikipedia page here. Um, this guy... Yeah, he died in 2015, so that's... Uh, where are we here? Does it not have his uh, his data? I think he lived down in Georgia. Uh, the Wikipedia refers to this as a personal model of reality. Speaking of Georgia, yesterday when we were out having lunch... Yeah. And we ran to a certain person, they talked about being down in Georgia, and I said, did they find a devil there? And they're like, no, I don't think so. There are a lot of people down there, though, and I was like, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you, did you, you saw that, right? I was checked out. I was lost in my burger, man. You, you know how I get when I got five guys in my mouth. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> uh, come on, where, where is it? <laughs> Other other reference pages for Wikipedia. See also crank person. <laughs> crank person? Yeah. Nice. They're, they're saying he's a crank. <laughs> uh, shit. So they don't have any bio information on Gene Ray. That kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah, no. He he lived down south. He was like the youngest of I think eight children, something like that. Um. Children will be blessed for... I'm not going to read this entire page because I mean, this you. is a super long page. Uh, but yeah, uh, children will be blessed for kissing of educated adults who ignore four simultaneous days, same earth rotation. Practicing boring oneness upon earth of quadrants. Boring adult crime versus youth. Supports the lie of integration. Oh yeah, he's uh, strongly racist, by the way. Um, oh, <laughs> you don't say. Just, just a little addendum. Well, um, an illiterate man that, that, <laughs> that's a racist? <laughs> oh, perish the thought. Well, he, he believes that there are four uh, major races. Uh, which were they? There's uh, the whites, the blacks, the Asians, and one other. What What else was the other? I, I, I think it might have been Indian. That's it? I, I think, yeah. So you can, like, pair up every other race into... Uh, into, like, one of those four races. Um, so this guy, so just to summarize here, well, oh, hold on. <laughs> there's, there's so much good stuff on this page, I love it. Uh, your dirty lying teachers use only the midnight to midnight one day, ignoring three other days, time, to not foul already wrong marshmallow time. What the fuck is marshmallow time? It's like the second time you've mentioned that. <laughs> what the I, fuck is marshmallow I'm time? I'm assuming what he means by marshmallow time is like a single 24 hour, a single day within a 24 hour span. They call it marshmallow time? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, he's, he goes on a bit about how Jesus couldn't possibly have been God because every man is born of woman and therefore if Jesus were born of a woman then he would not be God. Um... He says, the belly button is the signature of your personal creator. I believe her name, Mama. Um, well, <laughs> okay, so, again, just just going to back things up a little bit. So he believes that, if I'm, re if I'm hearing this correctly, he believes that every, every mother is a god to their child. Yeah, she, because she's the creator. Um, this guy also believes that he is wiser than God, because God only created 
one day per one 24-hour period. Well, he created four days to a 24-hour period, so obviously he's wiser than God. Right, right. Uh, no, that, that makes perfect sense. By the way, now that we I, I remember all those times I was like, man, God, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever, <laughs> God. You know Stephen Hawkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Hawkinson, that, that robot guy who made time. Um, so now, now that we have all this, all this, like, bizarre rambling, this is the only, all caps, only, official site for Gene Ray slash Time Cube. I am a knower of four-corner, simultaneous, 24-hour days that occur within a single four-corner rotation of Earth. God guys for unicorn scam and slaves, four-day cube, brain as oneist. Vilified teachers for unicorn swindle tithe from one day retarded. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Americans are actually retarded from religious academia taught oneism upon an Earth of opposite poles. Covered by Mama Hole and Papa Pole, pulsating opposite burritos. So if you haven't caught wait, wait, on, wait. Gene Ray's a bit of a nut. Pulsating at opera- opposite burritos? Yeah. Opposite burritos. <laughs> pulsating opposite burritos is my new indie band. Um, so yeah, Do you so- actually plan on actually singing any of these bands? You're just going to create them. <laughs> I'm just going to create them. Um, I'm going to like start buying the web URL for them so that when the bands get started, they have to buy them off of me. Ah, yeah, pretty sneaky, sis. <laughs> but yeah, so just to to briefly summarize, so Gene Ray, a little bit of a nutcase. This guy believes that within every rotation of the Earth, every twenty four hour rotation of the Earth, you have four days because you have sun up, sun down, uh, midday and midnight. And so each, like if you divide the Earth into fourths, each of those fourths within twenty four hours is going to experience all of those things. So that's that's his whole kick. And why are we dividing the Earth in fourths? Uh, because everything's cubic, man. Oh, uh, and, and so and I uh, granted I'm not reading this stuff off the website, but this is just what he says in all of his videos and stuff. Oh, gotcha. Linda Blair is in this movie. Um, but yeah, so like and like this guy's been invited to speak on college campuses. This guy's no, been, no, 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 no. There is no way someone that wrote that has been invited to speak on a real college campus. Okay, he has, but here's the thing: people did it as a prank. People are trolling him. Oh. So they contact him saying, you clearly are the wisest man on earth. Come talk to us. And then they just, like, harass him and give him shit on, like, the question and answer session. So people treated him kind of shittily for, for being, like, what's obviously just, like, a crazy man who just happened to have internet access. As crazy people do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, he's he's obviously crazy. And obviously, like, all this stuff that he has to say is kind of hilarious, but people did treat him kind of shitty. Yeah, because, I mean, just because someone's crazy and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, spouting my craziness all over the place, just let them be crazy on their own. Don't feed into their craziness. Right, yeah, yeah. And the same thing happened with the guy who made the Temple OS, which I don't think we've talked about that. But, no, we have not. Uh, I mean, he's a guy who was, like, actually diagnosed as schizophrenic, but he built his own uh, computer operating system, just worked on it. 40 hours a week writing line by line of code because he believed that that was what God wanted him to do. So, he, he just made it, but, um, but like, once people found out, it's like, oh, you know, this guy made this, you know, kind of primitive, uh, like, clunky OS. Okay, that's fine. Oh, he's schizophrenic? Let's give him some shit. And then they just started, like, tormenting him. Right, because... His is a very, no matter, very sad life. Because no matter, no matter how, like... I don't want to say bad, but no matter how uh, off someone may be, there are perfectly sane people who are more off than that person would ever be. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, now, Gene Ray, Gene Ray's kind of a dick, and, like, and I feel bad for the way people were shitty to him, but on the exact same token, he was kind of a dick. So you kind of get that Chris Chan moment of, like, well, I feel bad that they tormented him in this way, but at the same time, he did have this to say about black people. Right. So, like, you can only feel so bad about him. Um, the guy who made Temple OS, like, they're, they're just videos that will just, like, break your heart wide open, where he's just, like, having a mental breakdown and just screaming at his parents, and, you know, they're recording it to document, oh, look, you know, this, this is how crazy he's going right now. And then he'll just stop screaming and just, like, pull away and be like, I- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just suddenly remembered that I love you guys, I shouldn't be doing this. And he just walks out, and it's like, it's it's heartbreaking. But uh, we're not talking about him today, we're talking about Gene Ray. So, uh, so the Time Cube page has been taken down multiple times, by the way. Uh, but yeah, uh, all throughout the page you have these lines like, Belly Button Logic works, when does teenagers die? <laughs> Adults eat teenagers alive, no record of their death. All, all this weird stuff. 
But uh, that that was his whole thing. Is he believed that because clearly by his reckoning, the Earth exists in these four quadrants. Well, cube. It's a time cube, man. It has to be. Everything has to exist by fourths. He never provided what reasoning led to him determining this. Right. It's just pretty much like the guy selling the seven minute abs video right. in uh, something about Mary, where he's just like, no, no, man, it has to be sevens. <laughs> Everything's got to be sevens. He's like, seven sins? Seven dwarves? <laughs> You're dreaming of brie cheese when it's Gouda time, baby. So it's that kind of thing. Like people, and, and like there are people who like would come up to him during these Q&A sessions while he's speaking at these colleges, and they'll legitimately ask him, like, you know, okay, well, you've said all this. What led you to decide that it has to be fourths? And then, you know, that, that those are his answers. So he'll say, well, everything has to be cubic. It just has to. That's 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 what makes sense. It's, it's got to be cubic. Everything's cubic. It's like, yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So he doesn't really have anything to back up. It's just like in his mind, like he can't comprehend anything else. Yeah. Although I'm pretty sure this guy was also diagnosed as schizophrenic. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he believed that eventually the four major races would divide and there would be one more great, great race war to separate everybody because he did not believe in integration. And uh, the... Those were pretty funny moments, too, uh, during these Q&A sessions. There would, there would be people who would come up and be like, well, you know, I'm biracial, so what side should I take? And he just, like, it would not register. The question would not register with him, and he would just be like, well, there, there's four races. <laughs> like, yes, but my mother's white, my father's black, so what side am I supposed to take in the Great Race War? <laughs> and be like, well, the, there's only four races. <laughs> and, like, he, just, he could never provide an answer to that kind of thing. Have you ever seen In Bruges? Uh, no. Yeah, the Ambrose is a there's a moment like that in there with this uh midget that's some of this race war with the black midgets. <laughs> and uh and uh it, it, it it's so funny. He's like, Who's starting to do well, well obviously he's like, You'd be with, with you know with the with the with the white midgets, I mean <laughs> He's like, you know how much shit I had to take off those black midgets. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruges is fantastic. Uh, no, oh, I was, I was right. Um, in one paragraph, he claimed that because his own wisdom so antiquates no knowledge that a psychiatrist examining his behavior diagnosed him with schizophrenia. So there we go. Um... There are articles that proclaim that it is futile to analyze the text rationally, interpret meaningful proofs from the text, or test any claims. Uh, he, he has one chart here uh, describing the time cube concept. Like, the Earth is, you know, he's got the, the Earth round. He's not a flat Earther. He, he says flat Earthers are crazy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he does have, like, a, this cubic box around the Earth here. And, uh, like, in the midday quadrant, Socrates lives here. In the sundown quadrant, the Clintons live there. Um, what? In the midnight quadrant, Einstein lives there. And in the sunup quadrant, Jesus lives there. So, uh, it's a 416 cube principle. Because obviously, you know, 16, uh, you know, that's that's four cubic shapes. Right. So, you know, ha has to be. I, know, um, I, get, I get that. <laughs> um, so, yes, time cube. It states that all modern physics and education is wrong. It argues that among many things... Greenwich time is a global conspiracy, so there's no absolute unit of time. Um, he shows all kinds of like graphs and pictures, which I can show you, but it's all just like the scrawlings of insanity. Um, but uh, the, like allegedly, those graphs are his proof that uh, there are four separate days: sun up, midday, sundown, midnight, uh, and these all occur simultaneously. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, when the sun shines upon Earth, two major time points are created on opposite sides of Earth, known as midday and midnight. Where the two major time forces join, synergy creates two minor time points that we recognize as sun up and sun down. Uh, the four equidistant time points can be considered as time square imprinted upon the circle of Earth. In a single rotation of the Earth's sphere, each time corner point rotates through the other three corner time points, thus creating 16 corners, 96 hours, and four simultaneous 24-hour days within a single rotation of Earth, equated to a higher order of life time cube. I am so lost. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. I am so lost. I have no idea. You're ro like the, the corners are folding in on one another? Like, what the crap? Pretty much. Oh, is this that Shia LaBeouf movie? <laughs> mm. I... <laughs> Uh, 
So, I mean, and his concepts are by and large consistent. He does at least, you know, repeat the same themes throughout, but, I mean, he's... They're just this wackadoodle thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is just like, you know, Charlie with the colored string stretched all over the thumbtacks and all that, and... But yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, once... And, you know, this was the early days of the internet. This was before internet trolling was a thing, you know? It's it's not like you had these organized trolling groups, like with Chris Chan, where it's like, oh, we're just going to intentionally harass this guy. It just got to where, like, people stumbled across this website, and they were like, this guy is nuttier than Squirrel Ship. And it just kind of went from there. Uh, but yeah, no, like, they started sending out invitations. He would go speak on the college campuses. There are videos of this. And, uh... I mean, so so much of it was just like, you know, it's it's not even good trolling. It's just like mean spirited of like, it's so obvious that this guy is just insane. Yeah. And you're clearly just making fun of him to be dick. So typically, I don't I don't find internet trolling to be a big deal. You know that. You know that I I typically join right in and making fun of the people who I feel kind of bring it on themselves in mm-hmm. a lot of ways, but. I mean, there's just, there's something about this guy where it's like, you know, I, he, he's kind of, you know, buying enough rope to hang himself without you guys doing anything. Yeah. So. I mean, he's going to hang himself from one of the, uh, from the corners of the queue. <laughs> yeah, he, he died of old age. I mean, he, he started this whole thing when he was, like, pretty old. Uh, but, like, I mean, there are videos of people, like, going to visit him at his house claiming to be, like, time cube believers themselves. And uh, we'll we'll actually get into that in a minute, but like, like they would just like record him. Um, they would just record him uh, showing all of his research, and he just had stacks and stacks of paper, and just like so many books and stuff that he read trying to prove his point, and just like just pages and pages of handwritten notes, like trying to prove his like his belief system and his math. Uh, pretty pretty weird stuff, honestly. Um, so here, going back to Wikipedia. So, okay, so oh, go ahead. Let, let's just say that, just putting all this other stuff aside, what was the point of all this? I mean, I think this is just like, uh, this is just schizophrenia at work, honestly, is my take on it. Uh, like, all, all joking aside, I just think that this this guy, like, really believed that he was a super smart, super wise person, and... You know, I mean, clearly from a generation that did not believe in, like, treating schizophrenia with, like, like medical stuff in any capacity. And I just think that, you know, one day he was reflecting on how smart and brilliant he was, and he was like, wait a minute, four days, cubes, everything exists in cubes, and he just went from there. There was nothing to check him. So, he did his own thing. So, he just, he has this, this as, as far as you're, you're, you see it, he just put this all together in his head, was like, hey... This has to be, this makes sense, this has to be what it is. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then he just sets out to be like, yeah, this is how time works, even though it doesn't really matter, mm-hmm. like, whether he's right or not, because it doesn't change anything with what's going on. Like, we're not going to do anything differently because we adopt his, his ways of math. We're not going to do anything differently. Right. But he just believes that, hey... This is how time works, and I want you all to know this is how time works. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, it's it's obsessive. Like, he's he's a very, very obsessive person. So, like, he, this stuff dawns on him. It occurs to him, oh, this, this is the truth. And then he's like, I have to tell people about it, because obviously, if I thought of it, it has to be the most important thing in the world. And so, like, he, he just, he wanted to make the world a better place, and this was the best way he could think to do it. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was all just pure obsession on his part. Hmm. So, but, like, there's also moments when he's doing, like, these speaking engagements, which I'll read a little bit more about from Wikipedia, but, um, like, there are moments when he's doing these where he's like, you know, time cube is the answer to everything. Any, you know, any question you have about life or about the universe or whatever, it was basically his number 42, you know, he's like, you know, any, any questions at all that you have about life or the universe or whatever... All you have to do is take time cube logic and apply it, and it resolves it. And like he he fully believed that, and like he didn't have any way. There was a there was a Rambo animated series. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to talk about like what we got going on in the background, but I had no idea. <laughs> right, keep keep going. This is beautiful. Um, 
But yeah, no, so like, and like there's, you know, during one of these Q&A sessions at one of these colleges, this college student is like, okay, so you say the time cube can apply to everything, that it's, you know, the answer to all of life's questions. He's like, yeah, that's right, I believe it. He's like, okay, well, you know, can time cube help me get a girlfriend? And he's like, well, yeah, tell her about it, it'll impress her. (laughs) 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 And the kid's like, so you're saying if I go up to a girl I like and I tell her about Time Cube that she'll be so impressed that she'll want to be my girlfriend and he's like quiet for a minute and he goes, well, try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's, it, the, and the timing is amazing on it. He's just quiet for a minute. He's just like, well, try it. <laughs> um. So yeah, so in January 2002, he spoke about Time Q at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, it was a student-organized extracurricular event. Uh, and so at that point, at that time, he was offering $10,000 for people to disprove his notions of the event, and nobody attempted it. But again, you know, this, and this is the kind of thing we've talked about with other stuff of, like, it's a, it is a logical fallacy. You can't prove a negative. Right. Because in order to prove a negative, you have to have access to all information in the entire universe. I, I can't. I can't prove that you're wrong any more than you can prove that you're right. Right. Exactly. So and again, it doesn't really matter. Like even if we say yes, you're right, it doesn't change anything about how we do anything. Mm-hmm. So, like you know, okay, what what what's why, why would I even bother? Nothing was right, going to change right. from it. We wouldn't like, okay, well, now we've got to change all of our time to, to match this. But like, no, you're, you're not even saying that, that our measure of time is wrong. You're just saying that this doesn't work with that or whatever. Like, right, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, so, yeah, completely it, pointless. Yeah, and it's just, it's just saying, oh, modern education's alive. But, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you cannot prove time cube wrong anymore. I can't prove that Cthulhu is not out in the universe somewhere. Right. Now, I can say it makes the most sense to say that Cthulhu's not out in the universe anywhere, because that would just be silly. However, I don't know everything that's out there in the universe. Right, and, you know, and, and the only way you could prove that he's not... You can't prove that he's not out there, but I can prove that he is out there if I summon him. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much easier to prove a positive than... I mean, it's impossible to prove a negative. So, it's like... He's, he's kind of just like... He's kind of just screwing people over anyway, going, I'll give you $10,000 if you can disprove it. It's like you can't disprove it. Right. <laughs> so, suck on that, man. But, uh, let's see, what else? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, somebody wrote, writing for PC Magazine criticized his website, saying that uh, crackpot sites often say that this is the number one nutty site. Uh, he characterized the content as endless blather. Um, somebody once asked uh, Gene Ray what it felt like to be an internet celebrity, and he stated that it's not a position that he wanted. It's something he felt that he had to do, as no writer or speaker understood the time cube. So, I mean, again, this is just something he felt was his duty. Well, thank you, yeah, sir. <laughs> we need this. Uh, pretty sure his 2018 lecture at GT is still on YouTube. Um, <laughs> the main campus student newspaper remarked on Time Cube as uh, subtle little racist ideologies. <laughs> and, we, and we've already talked about that. He believes that racial integration is destroying all of the races. Because you, you have to have your four races. It's, yeah, it's you cubic, man. You have to. Okay, you gotta. That's 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 so crazy. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, uh, Gene Ray also made a website called Above God, in which he criticized the idea that God exists. Uh, there is a documentary film about Ray and Time Cube outside of the Down the Rabbit Hole. The one I watched was Down the Rabbit Hole, which I've spoken very highly of that YouTube channel uh, before. Uh, Fred Knudsen is the guy who does it, and his his show, not the channel, but the show, is Down the Rabbit Hole. So he talked about Time Cube. This is where I learned a lot about this. But uh, there there are other documentaries on it. So really, the biggest controversy surrounded in, uh, surrounding uh, Gene Ray is uh, concerning someone named Richard Jan Jan Jancharski. J J A N C Z A R S K I. So Jancharski, I think. Um, 
This guy identified himself as a cube head, uh, meaning that he believed in Time Cube. Um, announced that he was a disciple of Ray, self-professed that he was a disciple of Ray. Uh, he called himself the second wisest human because obviously, you know, nobody else is believing in this Time Cube stuff besides him and Ray. So uh, he made a fan site uh, called Cubic Awareness Online. And uh, he actually lived in Australia, so he travels from Australia to Florida. Another Florida man um, oh. to to meet Gene Ray. I thought I thought he was uh, in more of like the South, not Florida. But this this explains a lot. Uh, so while while he's there, traveling from Australia to Florida, uh, they have several disagreements, and they start arguing back and forth about the finer points of Time Cube, and they decide to go their separate ways. Um, so then. Ray denounces Jancharsky on his site, and he says, this guy's a false prophet, this guy claims to, to be a believer in Time Cube, he's not, he's nothing but a liar, he's just, he's just there to steal my research and make me look bad. Um, of course he is. So, and you know, for a long, t for, for not a long time, but for a short while, there was some debate on, you know, did Jancharsky actually believe in Time Cube, or, you know, was what, he just screwing around was with he him? just screwing around with him? Well, come to find out, Jancharsky commits suicide shortly thereafter. Probably about a year later. So, or, or maybe not even that, less than a year later. Because he was, he travels there in 2007, he committed suicide in February of 2008, so it was probably less than a year. So, that was the biggest controversy there. That, so like, it sounds like he may have really been a, a believer, yeah. and then that, that, that fight with him just kind of like shook, a, shook up his world. Yeah, so... Like that was that was kind of like really the only really major controversy, you know, like outside of the casual racism and just the the general madness. Yeah, outside of the casual racism. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've all been there. Just just look at my African American friend over here. It's one of my favorite moments from Trump speeches. I don't think I've ever heard that. One. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I don't know who he was talking about, but he just points out some black guy in the audience and he says that. Just look at my African American friend over here. <laughs> well, that that's that's special. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that's the basic gist of Time Cube, and obviously, I could just keep reading the website itself, and uh, and and like finding more and more stuff. But you you've got the basic gist. Yeah, I do. I do. So so there you go. That's that's another uh, little internet curiosity for you. Wow. <laughs> and where and why do you find these things? I I feel like they come to me, honestly. I mean, and, and uh, like, seriously, like, YouTube recommends a lot of the shit in the sidebar because I've watched so many Christian documentaries that they're like, oh, this is the kind of shit this guy likes. So, I mean, a lot of it is just the YouTube algorithm. And it's like, oh, well, he liked Chris Chan, and surely he'll like Boogie or Pro Jared or Wings of, Redemption, Wings of Redemption. So they, like, pile all that shit onto me. But then, like, because I was watching all those other documentaries, I just discovered down the rabbit hole. And once I started following that channel, I found all these peripheral things. Huh. <sighs> Very nice. <laughs> Seek awesome lectures. My wisdom debunks gods of all religions and academia. But how how would this guy? Because he he doesn't sound literate at all. <laughs> I don't understand how he's able to to do this. I, like write all this stuff up and because yeah he like I don't even I don't know how many times things he doesn't sound literate. But it's his writing is just so bad. I mean it's, it is ah uh, and it seems the whole thing seems pointless. It does, but, like, again, I think that's pretty easily explained away with the schizophrenia. That, like, to somebody who is truly medically ill, then, you know, that, that pointless thing is the most important thing in the world to them. Um, you know, I've spoken very highly of the uh, graphic... <laughs> um, the, uh, the graphic novel City of Glass. I don't think i uh, By Paul Auster. Have you mentioned that to me? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, because that's one of my top three favorite graphic novels of all time. Okay. So, yeah, we, we have discussed it. I, and I haven't discussed it in enough detail for it to, like... I, I you know, I'm not... you know I, I get that you wouldn't remember it, but yes, we, we have discussed it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like, he, he has, like, a chapter in that where he discusses, like, homeless people and how 
like, there are a lot of crazy homeless people out there. Yeah. And so he was showing how, like, the lead character is, like, walking along and he sees this homeless guy just, like, drumming drumsticks on the curb of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, to us we see that and it's like, oh, here's a crazy guy just, like, tapping his drumsticks. But as far as he's concerned, if he stops drumming, the world could come to an end. Right. Like, in this guy's mind, he is holding the universe together and it's his duty, it is his God-given duty to just tap these drumsticks, because that's by which all things are holding together. There's a, um, I have to, I have to look it up. Because there is a, is it a, one of the 1980 Twilight Zone episodes, um, or one of those, it has Malcolm McDowell in it. <laughs> and he's a guy, and I don't think it's a, it could be a Tales from the Crypt, but, and he has something like that, he goes and, um, and he's, you think he's crazy, because he's like, no, I'm, like the, like, if I don't do this, like, the world is going to fall apart, and he ends up, like, he's in, like, a mental institution or whatever. And anyway, um, but it's it's real. Like, the, the world is going to fall apart. He's one of the keepers of this thing, and then he passes it off to somebody else, and now they have to keep it um, and make sure the world doesn't, like, end. I have to find it, dude, because it's really interesting. But it's, yeah. it's kind of that same thing but it, where these people think, that oh, yeah, this person's just crazy. And in a sense, like like your your drumstick guy, right? Yeah, he's crazy, but I got to loan you City of Glass, by the way. That is a beautiful, beautiful book. And though you want to, you know, you want to kind of help him say, okay, look, you don't really have to do this. It's not, it's not real. He's theoretically not hurting anybody. So if he thinks that that's what's going to keep the world going, and he's not hurting anybody, and he's not kind of technically missing out on anything, then you're like, all right, well, fine, d drum away. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, in, in, in a lot of ways, like I said, kind of an ass in a lot of ways. Has a lot of bad things to say. You know, he uh, he would be, you know, this, I mean, he's, he's got bad things to say about different races. He's got bad things to say about religions. He's just, you know, he's, he's not a nice person. But at the same time, it's like, we don't know how his brain is wired here. Like, as, as far as we know... He is the drumstick guy. As far as he knows, this is this is what he has to do because this is what's holding the world together. Right. <laughs> you guys don't get it. It's cubic. You have to understand that it's cubic. So I I, th I think it's pretty interesting, and uh, and a lot a lot of the stuff that's on this page and a lot of the stuff that happens in the lectures is funny to me, which probably makes me an even worse person than I initially was. Yep. But no uh, argument there. I mean, that, that whole thing about getting a girlfriend is fucking hilarious, okay? That is funny. <laughs> Just tell her about it and press her with it. <laughs> Just try it. <laughs> Just try it. It might work. <laughs> you can't prove it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, such reduced in brain intelligence begets the student a tag of snot brain android. Incapable of comprehending absolute proof of four days rotating simultaneously within a single rotation of Earth. Uh, and that makes absolutely no sense. Cubics comprehend it. You are a cubic thinker or a snot brain. Snot brain? Wow. <laughs> you snot brains will know hell for ignoring time cube. I do not promote or suggest anyone kissing you, but you are unfit to live on Earth. Oh, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I mean, come to think of it, Gene Ray does call a broken beer bottle an engine knife, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he is a racist. <laughs> Shit. I thought it was, I thought it was uh, Malcolm McDowell, but I'm not seeing... Um, like, I'm, I'm looking at his, his work, but I'm not seeing it here. But damn it, it was... Um... I thought it was him, but maybe it must have been somebody else. But yeah, there was an episode of, of, and I can't remember what show it was, and that's that's what it is, and they end up turning it over to somebody else. Like, now you're the keeper of the world, yeah. and you've got to carry it on. I should do that with the next D&D &D game I run. Just have a crazy homeless guy that the characters are obviously not going to pay attention to. And actually, it is someone that really important they really need to pay attention to? Yeah, that would be pretty tight. Just have, like, the main villain kill the homeless guy, and then just, like, reality falls apart. It's like, that was Jesus, what? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I sometimes like to think of Jesus as this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing, like, none of my other friends listen to this podcast, because that would ruin my D&D &D campaign. <laughs> Isn't that kind of a shame? I, I, it's kind of okay, I guess. I mean, in, in a way, it's a shame, but... It is what it is, right? Yeah, like... 
I feel like the um I feel like there's sides to me that come out in the podcast where it's like I am kind of being an entertainer. And we've discussed like in the episode who we are. This is still but you know, by and large who we are. Yeah. But I'm still gonna throw out jokes on this podcast that I probably wouldn't in real life just to get a rise out of you or out of the listeners. So I don't know. I, I don't lose a whole lot of sleep over like the the two or three people in my social circle not listening to it. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously, I I'm a little bit more animated here on the podcast, and than I would be in, in that than I am ordinarily, um, where I'm like just like ah, you know, <laughs> you've said something that I, I don't agree with, or that like you're trying to push my buttons, I'm gonna just just go crazy now. Um, which I, I don't know, it's probably more like me than I want to admit, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So I get it. I get it. Gene Ray, cubic and wise above gods. I know you probably want to do a documentary about him, don't you? No, I, I think I think the uh, Down the Rabbit Hole episode is uh, pretty comprehensive, honestly. So, what did this guy do for a living? You know, I really don't know. Because I, I assume that he had a... Well, I assume that I, he had a real job, but then... They listen, talk about it. Listen to him, like... What he does is like, I, I kind of think that maybe he didn't. Maybe he... I think he was retired when he started this. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure. Because he got started in 97. Um, when did he die? Yeah, he started in 97. He died in 2015. So, 28 years that he did this? Yeah. No. Only 18 years. Hmm. He just, one day, just like, yep, this is what it is. Yeah, he just <laughs> decided that that was, like, super, super important. That's bizarre. <laughs> that really is crazy. Um, like Terrence Howard Math, that's just nuts. <laughs> and he just... Like, yeah, this, I mean, okay, so I, I'm, I'm somewhat fascinated by this, not by his whole cubist theory thing, but I'm fascinated in the sense that, like, what, like, how he looked at that and in his mind that made sense. So it was like, oh, yeah, and then these corners fold in on one another, and they <laughs> do this, and that's how time works, but in his mind... All the math equals out. Like, I'm curious yeah. as to how that happened, like how the math equaled out for him. I'd like to see the mathematic equations. Like, I don't just want to see the charts that are on his website. He was 69 when he started this, so he could have been retired. So that explains why he had the time to do it. True. So, but yeah, I, 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 I'd be curious to see, like, exactly, like, okay, so he... Yeah, he um sorry. He's um he, he's putting all this stuff together and he has to he has to some kind of like oh well here's my equation for this and mm -hmm. and it equals out to them like because obviously if you look at it you would look at it and be like, Okay, that math is wrong. Right, right. But for him, it seems right. So, like, just to get, get an idea, like, looking at it, like, oh, yeah, I, I, okay, I see now, like, why you think that or whatever. Your math is wrong here. I can't correct you because, obviously, you're, you're far beyond being correcting. But I would be, I would be, I'd be curious to see that. Yeah. Um, sometime we should just watch his, like, question and answer session. His, uh, his lecture. How long is it? Um, I think the lecture is an hour, and then the QA session is an hour. But we could like skip the lecture. Cause I was gonna say that's a long, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot for a crazy person. I mean, really, you'd get all the information you needed just off the down the rabbit hole thing. But uh, I like bringing this stuff to people's attention. You know, I, I like when people are like, "Oh, I didn't know this kind of stuff existed before." I will say this about this guy, as opposed to some of the other people, like. Uh, Jared Hypernova and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Earl like, Hypernova. I'm sorry. Earl, Earl, Earl Hypernova. <laughs> I like Jared Hypernova. <laughs> Earl Hypernova. That that uh, he this this guy isn't he's not doing anything malicious. 
Yeah. Like, he has this, this whole time thing, and people are making fun of him, but he's not doing anything malicious. He's, as opposed to, like, Hypernova, where <laughs> he's he's just being, he, he's being a malicious dick. He's causing problems for his family and stuff, and he's using them, <laughs> you know, to play his whole victim game. Well, this, you beat me up. Well, this guy is, like, doing anything. He's just like, ah. Uh, five years. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this guy, I mean, I don't really have any problems with, because, um... Because he he he's just like I'm crazy and uh, and that's you know but I'm not trying to bother hurting anybody else. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think if people had just like left him alone, then he would have had a pretty unremarkable life, and you know it would just the website would be there as uh, the website would just be there as like a testimony to you know here was a nutcase. Right. But uh, but yeah, that that is Time Cube. Interesting. Time cube. Yeah. So we're all trapped in this time cube. <laughs> time is cubic. Truth time. is cubic, man. What? That's that's bizarre. I mean... What side will you be on in the Great Race War? Uh, I don't know. Since I'm biracial, eh, I could probably go with you. I'm just... Wait, whoever's winning. That's how I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> be like, yeah, I'm winning. Actually, actually be, be, because because my, my, my skin tone is a little darker, I think it's already been cited for me. I'm probably going to be black. Uh... I don't know. We, too, too bad we can't ask him. Yeah. Oh, he would just—he wouldn't tell us anyway. He'd just be yeah, like, that's right. He doesn't have an answer. Like, right. yeah. He's like, there's only four. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm like super, super pasty pale white. So there's like, there, there's there's no chance of me like sneaking onto any winning sides. Just like, oh no, <laughs> I'm the white guy. Well, I'll make you a promise. When the race war does come down, <laughs> if if it does come down, when it comes down, um. <laughs> You know, a third first race war, huh? If if I do have to shoot you though, <laughs> I, I will I will I will aim for like a leg. That's no, nothing great. above the waist. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I, I mean I couldn't risk like hurting one of your arms or whatever because you still got to draw. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't want to kill you. You know, so you know I, I would go I'm, I'd go below the waist because I mean I would like to say that I wouldn't shoot you, but you know if if the brothers are watching, I can't I can't I can't not like you know be like. Oh, he's one of the good ones. No, there are no good ones. You know. I mean, I I couldn't be upset if the brothers are watching. So. Right. So I mean, like, there are no good ones. I just I, I mean, I've got to do something. So I would I would go for a leg, and I would just hope that you know that you would then be like like make it seem like like I shoot you in the leg, but you would grab your chest and fall over, and and they probably wouldn't question. They'd be like, what? Like, what? oh, t- t- you know, he's dead. That's all that matters. Be like, yeah. So. Well. Yeah, no, to- totally understandable. Yeah, but hey, we've been going for about yeah about fifty minutes, so that's that's an episode. Really? Yeah, no, we did. We didn't even do an ad break, did Ta- we? No, we didn't. But sure. hey, time cube flies, man. Yeah, 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 we definitely got caught up in the time cube. Time flies when it's cubic. That's what I'm going to call this episode. Actually, time flies when it's cubic. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a good title. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, that was interesting to hear this guy kind of prattle on about all this weird <laughs> time stuff there. You know, if you disagree with him, it's because you're a snot brain and you're brainwashed. I am. I am a. I am a brainwashed snot brain. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I'm like, yeah, no. It's like, yeah, I was. I don't believe time is cubic because uh, if it was, if it was cubic, you could be like multiplied by four. You could divide it by four. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense because nothing. Not, like, like our time right now is not divisible by four. What do we have? Twenty four hours in a day. You yeah. can't divide that by four. <laughs> what was it? Sixty minutes, a seconds in a minute. Sixty minutes in an hour. You can't divide that by four. I mean, right? Sure, right. Yeah. Right. No, it's just like so. It's just, it's just that's not how it works. So he's. <laughs> you mean like your information chain is jam, man. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's garbage. This guy was garbage. I mean, <laughs> Gene Ray, come back from the dead and come on the podcast. I, I you know, we got a Ouija board. That's that's the <laughs> that's the one great thing about like you know we talk about wanting to get celebrities and stuff on the podcast, and and that's cool. But dead celebrities are easier to get because once true. we summon them with a Ouija board, they can't say no. <laughs> the problem once, is they may never want to leave either. <laughs> Yeah, but but once we get you, like once we contact you through the Ouija board, you're, you're until we dismiss you, you're ours. That's true. And we're not going to dismiss you until you answer our questions. <laughs> so, you know, so well, I, I, th- I think that's why I need to start telling people when I go to them and I want to do interviews with them. It's like, okay, look, you can either play ball now, or when you die, I'm going to get you. You know, I'm going to get you. 
you know I'm going to get you. <laughs> One way or another, we will get you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, and like right now, it's only 10 questions. You know, <laughs> when, when I get you with the Ouija board, I might actually have you all 100, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, this, this is the point where we're like, would the Ouija board work? And you say... What? I, this is the point where I say, would the Ouija board work? And you say? Uh, try it. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm pronouncing it with the, with the, uh, the like, given tongue. It's actually an Ouija board. <laughs> Ouija. Ouija board. Uh, I still think it would be we are. We are. We are. It's an Ouija board. <laughs> Just like. Ouija. You come in. It's dinner time. <laughs> you you put down that 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 weird piece of wood with all the writing on it. <laughs> oh, it's just like Brett Favre. <laughs> Can't stand Brett Favre. I mean, I don't know anything about him as far as you know, like his his you know football playing skills or whatever. I just hate the fact that he thought that because he was dyslexic that he had to treat all the rest of us like morons. <laughs> Your name is Favre. It's not Favre. <laughs> it's F A V R E. That is Favre. Yep. Yeah, I don't understand how you can be like, what's pronounced as? No, fuck you. It's not. <laughs> I, I can take an E A U X and, and say, okay, yeah, that's ooh. But no, I cannot put a, a, a V after an R when it clearly comes before in pronunciation. No, I can't do that. Your fucking name is Favre. It's Favre. Hey, Brent Fav, Fart Favre, come on the show. No, <laughs> Debate no with us. keep your ass where you are, Favre. I listen, need you. listen to a different podcast, Brent. Yeah, yeah, you listen to a different <laughs> podcast. I don't need your ass on my show. Unsubscribe to our channel. It's my show, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <God> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, so you got me all Dude, heated up, man. They're not going to let you on their side in the race <laughs> war, man. <laughs> I just had to say that just to say no. <laughs> You know that you know that I'm down. And I'm down with them. You know, and that you know, even though we're partners on the podcast, I will shoot you. No, that's fine. I'm, 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 I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Yeah. You know. So just saying. <laughs> this is why I have to listen to these things end to end to make sure I edit all the shit out. <laughs> Good. You should. I don't know why I was the only one listening to it. <laughs> the best oh, oh. damn it see what you do <laughs> what I do you always forget the worst to me you're the one that brought this time cute <laughs> motherfucker on this show I had to try it oh. so yeah <sighs> alright well there we go <laughs> well thanks everybody for listening uh, we we do talk about a lot of uh, other interesting uh, curiosities of the internet so I would recommend listening to like our Lambda Moo episode uh, we do we do have like a micro episode where we talk about Earl Hypernova. Um, we we and never we we had a couple of episodes on Chris Chan and they uh, they were lost. But uh, one one of these days we're gonna do a let's watch of a Chris Chan documentary. So we are. Yeah. I mean I mean we are. Yeah yeah we definitely are. <laughs> Just because it's the only way I know of getting like the information conveyed in under an hour. <sighs> All right then. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks everybody. We we love you. Zang yo. <laughs> All right there, folks. That was our moms think we're funny. Let's uh, let's give them a hand. <laughs> <laughs>